Nathan oh, Wade. Hell. Nathan Wade. The transcripts is being released, and I've been screaming at the top of the roof about ta-da! Nathan Wade did meet. And Fonnie Willis did meet with the Justice Department prior to filing charges. They met with the White House. And they built the Justice Department prior to filing charges against Trump. And they now trying to figure out if they really did participate in election interference. Check it out. Well, former Georgia special prosecutor Nathan Wade is now admitting to several meetings with White House officials during his time on the state's Trump case. Now, that's coming from a newly released transcript of Wade's deposition on Capitol Hill last week. Wade resigned from the Trump probe back in March after his romantic relationship with Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis came to light. Mike Emanuel is live in Washington with the latest details. Mike. Emily, good afternoon. In his meeting with lawmakers and congressional staff, Nathan Wade's memory was a little fuzzy. Wade was asked, quote, did the interview with D.C. White House, to your recollection, involve anyone from the Department of Justice? Answer, I don't recall. On another matter, Wade was a little more clear when he was asked, quote, and did anyone in the White House direct you or to your knowledge, anyone else at the Fulton County District Attorney's Office to file charges against Donald Trump? Answer, no ma'am. Wade was on Capitol Hill one week ago for that questioning. In May 2022, Wade billed for a meeting with the White House Counsel's Office at his hourly rate of $250. But when asked about it, Wade could not detail the purpose of the meeting. Wade used some version of I don't recall more than 30 times when questioned by lawmakers and staff during closed door testimony. The House Judiciary Chairman says Wade's 2022 visit to Washington sounds very political. I mean, you got the whole thing with Nathan Wade, the, uh, taxpayer money going to Nathan Wade. He was traveling to Washington to meet with the DOJ, the White House, the January 6th committee, all in this effort to go after President Trump. Wade left the Trump case due to his romantic relationship with Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis. Willis warned Wade against revealing case details to lawmakers, noting the risk of harming ongoing legal proceedings. The newly released transcript says Wade met with Biden administration staff on at least two occasions during the Fonnie Willis probe in a former President Trump. Emily? Mike, thank you. you Harris, what are voters to make of this? You know, it, it's interesting because <laughs> they're both so very different, right? I mean, you've got Fonnie Willis and you've got her lover, and the only two things that they have in common was take down yeah. Trump, and they, they tried to do that. I, I'm not so sure that the Justice Department shouldn't have jumped in here early and taken a real good look at this. Because I want to know, is this happening in other places around the country? And with him now bringing forth information so late in the game, why didn't we know this before? And why is everything always right before an election? I mean, it's important to know what is going on. But was this legal warfare? Is that really close to, you know, really truthful? It looks like it was, in fact. It looks like we could have used these receipts a while ago. So why is the DOJ involved? This is a presidential candidate that this had to do with. Which, by the way, I mean, we wouldn't get that attention from the DOJ, but shouldn't somebody who's running for the country? So, Kaylee, to Harris's point, we, we need answers, but frankly, none were revealed. That's the whole point. There weren't receipts. He says, I don't know why I was having these meetings at the White House. I built for it, but I can't articulate why I was there. So the yeah. question is, is it incompetence? Is it fraud? And is it an absolute travesty of the justice system? To Harris's point, this is a presidential candidate. Yes. And no matter what, this is unacceptable. Yeah, look, I mean, there are so many questions. Nathan Wade, I'm not obviously in his head, thankfully, but <laughs> Nathan Wade, I mean, you have this May 2022 meeting with the White House counsel's office and you bill $250 per an hour and you don't know what the meeting's about. You don't have a record of the meeting. I mean, you know this, Emily, in law, when you have billable hours, you write with some level of specificity what you did during the hour. It's not just trip to D.C., pay me X number of dollars. It's trip to D.C. to discuss X, Y, or Z. So he didn't keep any detailed notes, it seems. Then you go to November 2022, where he does not remember why he met with the White House. This is a local Georgia prosecutor. Mm -hmm. When you meet with the White House, let me tell you, I mean, I did it at the federal level when I was outside of the White House just working on the campaign. You remember why you meet with the White House. It's a huge deal. And for a local Georgia prosecutor, this is a massive deal. But his memory evades him. And I just remember his interview with Caitlin Collins where a consultant had to step in and stop him from answering something. And they had to go confer to the side. And then he comes back. 
not in his head, but I don't know why he doesn't have a memory of this. Your point about the billing, you know, Kennedy, there are uh, the, the, that specificity is required for ethics reasons. So you do not just say meeting. You actually do have to, within 30 days, specify exactly to the 0.6 of a minute or the 0.6 of a quarter hour, what exactly were you doing? So that was a long time ago. Those notes were certainly reflected in those business accountings. We also know that now he had to take a racketeering class mm. before joining the prosecution team. The caliber <laughs> dealing with a presidential candidate, to yeah. me, seems shocking that you would pull in an attorney that needs a, a course on what to do. So... What's basically being asserted here, and they're starting to grill them, and I've been yelling this at the mountaintop for a long time, Fawny Willis and Mayor Andre Dickens down in Atlanta, it is public record that they met with the White House vice president, the White House, prior to filing charges against Trump in Georgia. Now it's being revealed that Nathan Wade, who obviously was her lover and to some extent, maybe just recently was still her lover because they both appeared when her daughter had to get arrested in the first place and it was on a, you know, the cop cam or whatever, that he billed the Justice Department, the Justice Department that then advises whether or not you should file charges against Trump in the first place. And he had to take a racketeering course before... <laughs> before even participating in this case in the first place. And so this is breaking news. And what is basically lending itself to is election interference and them trying to prevent Trump from being able to run for president in the United States in the first place. What are y'all thoughts on this, if any? Uh if he was if they were if they were dealing with the White House with this, like how is that being overlooked in, in, the, in the fact that you this regime is still running for president? Now, how does that work out? They're a part of, they're a part of this. Like, I, I don't understand how, how, how you can run for president when you were a part of trying to illegally keep somebody from running. I don't, like, this is crazy to me. I don't, I don't, I don't think this is new news. I, I think we already knew that they met with the White House, and by that nigga saying he don't recall shit, we didn't really ne or learn nothing. How do you not recall? I that's got the, invited. That's, that's I, got why. Invited to, I got invited just to meet with Trump. I remember every single word that was said. Everyone. He's lying. It's clear, like, he he like really if you watch any court proceedings, when motherfucker lying, they just, you can't, you can't tell what a motherfucker recall, yes or no. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's perjury without, like, you can't prove it. <laughs> so, does this affect y'all view towards the candidates that are running for president, and does it influence how you see Kamala Harris and the Biden administration at large? I mean, I don't, uh, it don't really, it don't change don't, the way I view it. Like, really like, I just, I'm burning for Trump because my life was on on fleek <laughs> back when he was the president. Gary, no, nah, it doesn't. It doesn't change any anything for me. Is this I'm bothersome to y'all though? Is this bothersome to y'all in any way? I think it's it's probably normal that like sneaky shit like this happen all the time. We just don't hear about it. Like you have to realize Trump is the reason that all of us are in the politics. Before Trump, didn't nobody give two shits about politics. As soon as Trump get in the office, everybody and their mama, we start paying attention. So, mm. hey, Trump did a, he did the whole country a, a service. Like, people, more people are getting involved now that, that, that Trump's been, been running. I think, I think that's, yeah, this, we can say that. This doesn't surprise me. Um, I'm like ever no. since ever since ever since RFK Jr. explained all of what he had to go through just to get on the ballot and all of that, I was like, okay, this is. I'm not surprised at any stops that are pulled out. And then y'all may laugh at this, but I've been on a blacklist 
kick. Y'all know the show, The Blacklist? Yep. I've I have like never watched ODing. it, but. I've been like ODing on Blacklist. I'm in season five now. So a lot, of, a lot of what I'm seeing happening, I know you shouldn't base it off of a TV show, but the government is, there's a lot of crooked people in the government who, and it's that they use the power in a way that serves their purpose. I mean, serves their needs. So I'm not, I'm not surprised at all. And the, as gullible as people are today, you can do all of this right in front of people's faces. Like you can just do, it seems like you could do almost whatever and somebody is still going to advocate on your behalf. Somebody is still going to say that you're doing fine, you're doing great. So no, I'm not surprised at all. Well, even even after them two got caught banging, they still be hanging out together and shit openly in public. Like even her demeanor on the on the stand, I was like, oh wow, she is. Like she was, okay. a, she thought she was the king bitch in that <laughs> mother with her with her little fat ass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not surprised. You know, for me, I don't know how people can continue to ignore who this work, who this woman is, and what she's selling y'all as far as what her image really is. When, in my opinion, this is a clear case of election interference, which is and got to be one of the most. Because uh, we all know that certain things happen behind the scenes, but to get caught so openly and blatantly with it and for people to turn a blind eye and, and ignore it. And to know that people will still vote for it. And they don't even know who this woman is outside of what she's done. And I think that this is one of the biggest things that go into it. Is weird to me. It's wild to me. How can people just completely ignore? Um, I don't think they care. Like, there's certain people, just like Jamisha, she don't care anything about Kamala. All she cares about is she's a black woman. Hey, listen, listen. That that that's the main thing that gotta stop. That's that has to stop. Cam Kamala, Kamala, whichever her name is, she's not black. Like we can't even like you that has to stop. You can't entertain that shit, man. Like this woman is posing. She's straight up posing. She's not black. She only wants to be black because she wants those votes. She wants black women to recognize her and identify with her. She don't give a fuck about them. Period. It just goes back to, I'm just gonna keep saying the same thing over and over and over again. Politicians are not to be trusted. I do not give a fuck who it is. Like all of this shit that we're talking about is all corruption. Literally, it's all corruption. We're just sitting there just like, and, and it's normal. No, man, this shit is dead ass fucking wrong, man. Like, I don't even know how this woman can run for president. I don't know how Biden can run for president. Like they were in the white, they, they had meetings with the White House and everybody just like, oh, okay, it's cool. <laughs> what? I don't think anyone said, oh, okay, it's cool. I don't, I don't think No, Quinn, 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 man. Listen, you start talking to these people, they're not going to give a fuck about that. If you start telling, if you start breaking this shit down and you like, well, you know, like they really trying to, they really trying to keep this dude from running for president illegally they they ran a whole scheme you think people are going to be like no that's not true well all the facts is there they're i don't think like, people oh, care. care i don't think that people don't care. care they're not going to give a fuck all they're going to do is say hey i vote democrat that's all they're going to say i vote democrat and then they go and they're going to pin her in yeah well when i got one of these little things the other day from this guy from Planned Parenthood. You got I something mean, from Planned Parenthood? Off. Seriously? What? Yes. Can y'all Seriously? Wait. That's Where's crazy. What is this? Hold on. Let me see. We can, we can see we must, Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, no, no. no say it, show it. Show it. Show it. We I'm must elect champions account. of reproductive freedom up and down. Oh, Jesus Christ. And then wow, that's crazy. And then right That's here. another thing, though. 
that that's 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 a that's genocidal insane, bro. That's a <clears throat> that's a genocidal so, agenda. So not that right I there, was considering her, but this one right here, this was like, yeah, no bueno for real. Like I'm I want my Trump hat. Like the, I'm 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 like because that's crazy. I, because I'm, I really started delving deeper into this whole reproductive thing. Because, because what I'm noticing is, people say reproductive freedoms, but I'm like, what, what exactly are we talking about here? Are we talking about abortions? Are we talking about IVF? Yes. Because I hear yes. them, I hear them talking about IVF. So I delved in deeper, and I hear them bringing up these stories about women who, you know, they they died or they they got hurt or whatever because they couldn't get the abortion that they needed and they want to have kids and all of this and i did more research first of all most of the abortions that women have are not because it was a life um threatening situation that's you know? correct and you know <laughs> and when i started to look up okay what what is really happening in the states there are a few states who have stricter you know, like laws, but I couldn't find a state where it was totally off the table 100%. Mm. Most of the states that had the real, real strict laws were, you know, the the great, the um, incest or what have you. And then I'm like, so then what is the real issue here? Because if you look at it, Trump is saying the same thing. Like he's not saying no abortion. He's saying there should be a limit. Correct. When I went back to Roe v. Wade, there were limitations in Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade didn't Ooh, allow for Carrie you, is doing the, the research. Roe v. Wade didn't allow for you to have an abortion until you you know nine months you know pregnant or what have you. And then I thought back in the day, and I'm gonna get a little personal with y'all. Mo, I would be hard pressed to name a female that I grew up with who did not have an abortion. Wow. And I can't, I can't, I can't think. You of said what, Rita? Women. Rita said facts. I can't think of a and many more than one. I can't think of Rita says she can't of, think of hold on wait, Carrie, because you listen to this. What'd you say, Rita? I can't think of one person that I grew up with that didn't have one. Rita, she Rita's saying the same thing as you. Yeah. So y'all saying and, that most young women or most women that y'all grew up with, or almost every woman that to memory probably had an abortion had Rita says she knows people that has had multiple had. me too me too now I don't know nobody not off memory not that I know of <laughs> that's crazy now. okay so now I know why they plan into plan into that demographic because they basically using it seriously using it as a form of contraception they are seriously used as a form of Oh, that's crazy. Right. And, and I, I vividly remember how how available Planned Parenthood was to us for abortions, for condoms, for all different types of things, for lubricants, for like, it was put in your face. And many people, many people took advantage of it in a lot of different ways. And I'm, I'm going to say this. I know this personally. That's as far as I'll go. I know this personally. And this goes back to what I was saying, Anton. Hopefully you can hear me. But this goes back to what I was saying, y'all, about some of the women who responded to Yada, I mean, to what Anton was saying negatively, is probably because he's talking to them. So for me, this whole, like, abortion conversation, it hit, it hit close to home because many of us, were able to take advantage of things that were available to us. So it would be easy to say, if you participated, then how dare you vote against it or be it being strict. But if you really take a look at some of your behavior and call yourself out and say, wait, I had no business doing stuff at that age. Other women had no business doing stuff at that age. So maybe if things were a little bit, um, tighter if the reins were tighter if the conversation about abstinence was better if the conversation about uh cherishing your body that god gave you was stronger if people were not afraid to talk about how families 
should stay together if people were not afraid to talk yeah, about sure. not getting pregnant and make it very difficult for you to have an abortion then maybe a lot of things wouldn't have went down that way 